It's spooky season again. So today, we're gonna make something creepy. A sentinel is pretty terrifying, and so is Ultron from the MCU. But we're gonna make the king of the scary robots, a Terminator. The technology isn't available to make a liquid one like the T-1000, but we just got a new robot that's the perfect fit for a T-800 Terminator. This project is sponsored by Bamboo Lab. This is Stanley, an H1 humanoid robot from Unitry. It has 19 axes, three computers, a stereo camera, and a 3D LiDAR. Out of the box, it can walk around and even has really sweet dance moves. This project is definitely not what this robot was built for. But make sure to subscribe because we do have more projects planned for it, including reinforcement learning. The plan is to take Stanley, remove his head, and add a bunch of 3D prints onto the outside that turn it into a Terminator. I bought this model online. It's meant to be a small 3D printed Terminator that you could fit all the pieces together. Hopefully, when I scale it up to Stanley's size, it ends up being detailed enough that it still looks really good. Stanley's layout doesn't really follow the skeleton of a normal human, especially because his legs are much further apart. We need to move around all the individual pieces to get them to line up with where they would be on Stanley. We can scale and align everything so it's pretty close. The real star of this show is the Boolean modifier in Blender. This allows you to basically add and subtract objects together. So you can cut one out of another, or you can glue two pieces together and they form one single body. We can't just put a Terminator and just subtract an entire Stanley out of it. In a lot of cases, we need to make dummy objects that represent the space that we need the piece to move through, not just the robot itself. The sponsor for this video is Bamboo Lab. They sent over an A1 and an A1 Mini 3D printer, each with an AMS. The insane amount of 3D printing that was needed for this project really benefited from having quality, reliable printers. If you have a print that takes 36 hours to print, you don't want that print failing halfway through or running out of filament and not noticing. The printers are reliable and accurate enough that they can print really long prints really accurately but the AMS is my favorite part. If a roll of filament runs out, the AMS will automatically switch over to a different compatible filament. So the print will just continue and you won't end up with all these little half strings of filament around that you can't fully print something with. It helps you finish off all your rolls and stops downtime, which is absolutely fantastic. The slicer software is also fantastic. It looks really complicated and has a lot of little details that you can change, which is beneficial once you figure out how it works. It also has these tree supports that are way easier to get off the prints with minimal cleaning compared to the normal supports. It also has the ability to lay out all your pieces across multiple plates. So you can program for multiple 3D printers or multiple setups all at one time. This makes sure that you don't miss any pieces on really big, complicated projects like this. Ooh, that's a lot of print time. The A1 and A1 Mini that I have are gonna be a good start, but this is gonna take me far too long to print on my own. So I'm gonna reach out to James at Hacksmith Industries, and hopefully he can help with his wall of bamboo printers. If you're looking to get into 3D printing or upgrading your current setup, Bamboo Labs is actually having a sale right now. So check out my link in the description and get yourself a really good printer for an awesome price. We've been printing for days. We have a ton of pieces. Most of them are glued together and doing a really quick fit up. The model and the real robot don't match. 
The CAD missing some bolts and nuts and threads are pretty standard. You usually don't need any of that stuff. But there are some big differences between the model and the real robot that are an issue. We're gonna play a quick game to spot the difference. See if you can see the two big differences between the real robot and the CAD. Did you see them? The hips look totally different. The main body of the hips is the same, but they don't have the tops of these motors here. There's also an extra shroud behind the legs that is used for fans to cool the motors. So I'm gonna use something called Polycam. This is a free app for your phone that you can take a whole bunch of pictures and 3D scan an object. It's called photogrammetry. It's not going to be ultra accurate, but it's definitely close enough and super fast for what we're trying to do. I can take a bunch of pictures and I get a 3D model that I can just download and bring right into Blender. Of course, this means more reprinting. All the pieces were glued together with super glue and any large gaps or really visible layer lines, we filled in and then sanded back with wood filler. After a couple coats of sandable primer, everything was sanded back again. None of this is perfect, but it would probably take me a month to clean all this up properly. Ain't nobody got time for that. The torso is glued together from a bunch of big 3D prints, but there's no way to glue the whole thing together and actually slide it on. So I need a way to clip the front and back together, and for that we're just going to use magnets. In magnets, how do they work? With everything primed and sanded, we can finally paint them silver. Looks so good. The most sinister part of any evil robot is always the glowing red eyes. We can model some pupils and print them in transparent filament. I'm press fitting these in just so I can pop them out later in case I need to replace them. The eyes are powered directly from the USB on the onboard computer. I'm not 100% sure the long-term plans with this robot, so I'm not just gonna put in red LEDs, I'm gonna put in tri-color LEDs. These are basically three LEDs, red, green, and blue, kind of mushed together into a single one. That way, by changing how much of each color you have, the eyes can actually produce any color and that makes it a little bit more future-proof. Maybe when it's navigating, the eyes need to be blue, or if it's trying to do some sort of speech recognition, they may turn green. All that future stuff sounds great, but the real reason is disco mode. All right, this is gonna be our first actual walk test. We've had the robot walking around before, but not with all the stuff on. So. Couple concerns is the hands when they walk might hit either the hips or the leg, or these feet um, are actually really fragile. Uh, I have a feeling they might just explode because um, this robot walks really hard. So we'll give it a test with one foot so I only break one of them instead of two and see if it works as is or if we need extra support added in. Oh, yeah. Well, we lost the 
thumb. I figured the foot would fail. I was hoping it failed less badly than that. That's why we have 3D printers. <laughs> <laughs>